Right. Okay. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange, and I'm broadcasting live not from the Big Daddy Gun Studio in Gainesville, Florida. I'm actually in Missouri. <laughs> Let me just just gotta make sure. <laughs> we're out. We're in the um, the area of Branson, Missouri. We're on vacation, family vacation with the rest of the Strange folks, and um, we wanted to come on today to talk about the Vepper rifle. Um, specifically Malat Vepper rifles being added to the ban list by Treasury Department. We've got guest, my friend, Walter Keller of Safety Harbor Firearms here to help us talk about that. Walter, how's it going? Good, good. Yeah. So you want to uh, actually, you know what, let me pull up the news here. It's uh, this is in a bunch of different publications, but I'm going to read this from the firearm blog and it came up. At this point, it's about 20 hours ago. Breaking U.S. banned Vepper due to sanctions. Looks like it. So that's the title. It says U U.S. Department of Treasury released an update to the sanction list in connection to the Russian-Ukrainian conflict today. And it appears that as a result of the change to sanctions, the U.S. has banned Vepper rifles and shotguns from further import. And then it says, well, not really banned, but United States-based businesses are prohibited from doing business with Malat or, or Ruzi going forward. I imagine that any products that have been purchased already and are in the process of import will be available for purchase, but anything past that will become very scarce like the Sega rifles and shotguns several years ago. Okay, so it, it, it goes on, you know, the article goes on from that. Um, any reaction to that, Walter? Yeah, I'd heard, um, I guess the, um, was the, one of the Ukrainian, um, um, leaders or, or somebody of politicians was visiting the White House, I guess, just recently, too. Okay. Um, but I had heard about Mol Molot's uh, financial problems a while back, and, um, you know, they weren't sure what was going to happen. Um, so, uh, you know. So you think this is kind of like a double whammy on, on the situation, like Molot having financial problems and then we're putting them on the ban list? Yeah, yeah, they're putting them on the ban list because of the Russians' monkey business in the Ukraine. Um, right. Um, and then, you know, things aren't going real well, it doesn't seem like, with uh, the Russians at this point. Um, yeah. Even the situation's though going downhill. Yeah. I know they have an election. They're still not our buddies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've, I'm pretty sure the Russians have messed in every election for, I don't know, the last 20, 30 years. Um, much less, much less us messing with things related to them. So, so for folks out there who don't know, let's uh, break down kind of quickly what the Vepper is. Uh, my understanding of it is that it's a heavier duty um, rifle than your standard stamped out rifle. It's based on the Russians, uh, the RPK, that's RPK, basically right. full auto. So it's like fifty percent right. more reinforced uh, in in the uh in the receiver and in the barrel right right correct it's got a heavier heavier thick thick a thicker metal in the receiver okay right. so that makes like the vepers are kind of if you want to go high end that's what you would be looking for yeah if you want the, the better quality say versus like a romanian gun or something you go with the vepper yeah okay do you have any of those in your collection i know you have an extensive collection of vepers of i'm sorry ak's excuse me i don't have so, uh, a day late and a dollar short on that one. Um, I just right. never, just never pulled the trigger on one. So you didn't get a Vepper. No, don't. <laughs> oh boy, you, you and probably several, you know, lots of folks out there who wanted to get into it. We've been reviewing recently the Krebs Custom KV13 Mod 2, which is built on a basically it's a Vepper that they take and then they rehab and add all kinds of cool stuff to it. We've been reviewing one of those recently um nice guns a couple segas though they're also in the band for the first yeah band. yeah okay yeah anyone out there who has a vepper that they want to sell to walter keller please <laughs> let us know um i'm sure he's not looking to pay ten thousand dollars for it no but. no no i don't play that game homie don't play that game so well, do you think, is, is that what you think is going to happen? I know you said off air that you try to order one today. What happened? Um, I just checked um, Centerfire's website and um, um, on the shotguns, and they were out of stock. 
Okay. So, Chris, Chris in the shop here, Chris, the machinist, he's been looking around too. And he's like really pissed about this band thing. Cause he's been wanting to get one, but he just never had the Jack to pull the trigger with. Yeah. Look, I know that the last time I actually spoke to Mark Krebs, he said that they did have the KB 13 mod twos. They did have them available. Has anyone checked there? I know those are like even higher end because of no. the work that Krebs has done to them. I this has got to really suck for them, especially if they build their business based off of those guns. Yeah. So. I mean, if they have a few left, it's, you know, uh, it's not really going to help them because they can't get more in to keep doing it. Uh, I did try to reach out to Krebs to see if we can get them to come on. I haven't gotten any response as yet. And I also reached out to Jim Fuller. You know, he's really busy over there because there's a lot of changes going on uh, at Rifle Dynamics. So that's, I mean, that's keeping him really busy. I probably, you know, will get something, get him to come on sometime in the future. We'll see what, how the timing works. You know, Jim gets up real early, <laughs> works, like works himself to the bone. That's why he's so skinny. And then, you know, he's, he's knocked out after that. I, you know, he's busy. He's a busy guy. But we'll try to get him to come on. They also build their stuff. They build some things based on Vepers as well. So, right. And, and, well, and there's, I'm sure there's other companies out there doing it. Yeah, to me, it's kind of an opportunity here for someone else or some other company to maybe just step up and start making some stuff very similar. Um, who knows? Maybe Kalishnikov USA will step in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, yes, Kalishnikov USA, they're supposed to be in full swing. They are in Florida, by my understanding. I've also, I've tried to, uh, I've tried to do some things with them where I could, uh, you know, bring to light what they're doing. They've moved to Florida. They've got factories and things like that set up there. Not easy to get those kinds of connections going so that we can communicate with them. Hopefully, though, they can do something about it. Yeah, that that would uh, that would definitely be good. I guess. I, like I said, I just never. I have some other RP, RPK. You broke up there for a second, Walter. Say that again. I'm sorry. Yeah, we lost you for a second on audio. At least I did. You want to repeat that? Let me walk back to, back towards the uh, router. You okay, you're walking around. Yeah, I'm doing it on my new yeah. uh, new iPhone yeah. seven. Okay, Walter's trying to show off his new iPhone seven plus that he finally decided to buy. Yeah, you've been because you because you're old. What was that? An iPhone three or something that you had? Oh, I had a five something. Yeah. Five. Okay. Might as well I've be. Been. Might as well be a three. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah. know, it, it worked till last night, and then I went to it just died flat out. Okay, yeah. So, what were you saying? Uh, just go back to what you were saying there. Oh, about the um, about the uh, yeah, I have a Yugoslavian RPK. So okay, hold on one second. Hold on, I've got Jim actually calling me now. Hey, Jim. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. Um, I'm actually on live right now, but I'm glad you called. So we can, I, do you mind if I put you on speaker? We'll just, we'll just call you back when you're, uh, call you back whenever you're ready. Man. Okay. Uh, do, are you able to come on the call? Because I can send you a link. We're doing a live call right now. I can send you the link if you'd like. Uh, who are you on the call with? I'm on the call with Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms. It's just me and him. Okay. So uh, what are you guys discussing? we're talking about the uh, Vepper ban, Vepper being added oh, to okay. the ban list. Yeah, I'll send you a link so you can jump on this. I'll send it right now. Uh, email? Um, well, yeah, uh, you know what? <laughs> Don't give your email out because I'm, I'm live right now. Text me your email and then I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Okay, bye. All right, guys. So we're gonna. it looks like we're going to get Jim Fuller on here in a second. I'm going to let Walter take over while I try to send out that link. Go ahead, Walter. Oh, okay. Um, I have some similar Depper type guns, but not, I guess maybe that doesn't count. Um, but I, I probably would have pulled the trigger on the shotgun this morning as a Johnny Come Lately if they had them in stock, but they didn't have any more in stock. So. Yeah, I mean the news has been going on for for a few hours here. So. Yeah, I mean at, at one point they were they were really inexpensive. They, all of all the Malat guns were down really low, and I knew about this problem they were having because I'd heard about it um, on the firearms blog, I think, or one of the other sources. But I didn't mm -hmm. think it was. Gonna... 
band, but you know, one thing, you know, associate, I guess it's guilt through association. So they get put on the list. So how do we, how do we wind up in this situation in the first place? Do you want to explain that to folks out there? Well, the, 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 the Russians trying to invade the Ukraine, we uh, were trying to penalize them for that. And then through, through sanctions. And then of course, Malat has financial problems and the Russians don't want them to go under because they're a provider of stuff, guns and stuff. So um, um, I guess Kalishnikov is going to step in and, and kind of take over. But Yeah, so that's affecting other things, right? Like I think right now um, that's affecting ammo as well, right? Especially, uh, specifically the AK-74. Oh, they, they, that's what they manufacture also? I wasn't... I'm not, I mean, I think that like the different, the different, uh, the, the things, the other things that are on that list. Oh, I'm sure yeah, anything that they, anything that they manufacture will be on the list. Yeah. 74s, 47s, uh, RPKs. I don't know if they do PKs and stuff like that, but, but um, it'll all be on the, on the no go. Yeah. And, and to your knowledge, have any of these guys, uh, as Malo tried to move to America, as Kalishnikov has done, so I don't. Maybe... I don't think. Um, uh, my machinist Chris was telling me that, that Malat has like forty million dollars worth of debt. Wow. And I. Okay. And I guess. And I, I guess they're coming in. That one's taken over, or coming in for twenty million or something like that. But they have to guarantee they, they keep the the arms flowing. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, I don't know how it works in Russia, but it's probably a little different than everywhere else. Right. Yeah. So for anyone who's wondering, we sent out links to Jim. So right now they're working on uh, getting the computers and all that set up so that Jim can jump on. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, because we, we don't even know at this point if, um, you know, if it will be possible to do anything like that. So what happens here? Is, is our only chance of getting these at reasonable prices if an American company decides to manufacture these somehow, but they still have to get the intellectual rights to be able to do that, right? Yeah, it's a. It, it, it's not like you okay. start the right So it looks like uh, Peter Hank sent a message to you, Walter. He says, Walter, order from Classic. Um, now, right. no more rifles, but shotguns, one still available from Classic. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so well, I don't. Now, yeah. now that we passed that nationwide. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, everybody. You better hurry up. You better tell Chris now, <laughs> or someone over at there at the shop to go jump on there and put that in the basket right now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, I know Hank. You're you're, you're such a young guy, but did you ever try to win a th anything on a radio station back in the day? Did yep, like absolutely. Be like the tenth caller. Yeah. Yeah. I. I I won tickets to uh, not to change the subject here because we're trying to, but I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I won tickets to concerts and albums, stuff like that. So that's that's the way. Dial as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, go now though. I mean, you might be able to do it if it. it you uh, may have a, a better chance because maybe some guys. You know, this is a money thing. This is why people haven't done it. A lot of folks out there haven't done it yet. I see that Jim joined, but I don't see him in front of the camera. I do see his logo popped up so we're, we're getting close to actually getting mr fuller these to turn a speaker on too i see the little cross through a speaker yeah um, yeah so they're, they're probably getting set up that's why they muted it but they're, we're, we're getting close to getting him to come on here yeah so i think you, you know you may still stand a good chance of being able to get something just because anyone out there who's going to jump on that they have to have that money available right now and and they've always been what's been the average price for a vepper before all of this like a Vepper rifle, probably in yeah. that in that six ninety nine, seven ninety nine time like price range, maybe eight, depending on the model. And the shop for six ninety nine, I've seen them a lot cheaper when things were slower. But you know, right now I think Centerfire wanted seven ninety nine for a shotgun. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. I, I don't really have one. It's not. One of those things I that's why I haven't bought one. They're cool, but I just didn't want to spend the money because kind of, yeah. But I don't fall the band thing when things get crazy. I don't buy stuff because I understand what happened actually. So, um, yeah, 
Usually, <laughs> how do you how do you come about your AKs? Are you usually buying this stuff when you go to Knob Creek, or how how does this usually happen for you? Some of my stuff's been private. Um, some of my guns, um, some I've bought, just like everybody, something for sale, and I, I buy it. Um, some of I've assembled, I've assembled stuff for kits. Um, um, right. So yeah, I got a. I haven't bought an AK in a long time, actually. Um, okay. A couple of years. That's a long time. For Why not? What's the reason? I mean, I know there's there's a lot of guys I know that kind of shied away from buying AKs because the price has gone up, and then they've been telling me that they remember, um, you know, they remember that when the AKs were seventy five bucks. And I keep telling them, well, that's well, not ever happening ever again. I, I've heard those stories of the $75 AKs, and I've been doing this since, like I said, in like 92. And mm. I don't $75 AKs. In other words, $75 SKSs, but not AKs. I mean, that was, I mean, maybe 175 not 75 um, But um, I, I just haven't bought one recently because I, I didn't want to spend, you know, I, I like some of the guns that are out there, but I just, I just couldn't justify $8 for the one. So that's why when I can, I can, I, I do have, you know, I have a center, I have a, the first gen um, century arms milled receiver gun, which is a nice gun. I like it. I've got a century arms. They made some uh, milled receiver Polish knockoffs. Um, yeah. That, that works well. And then I've got a bunch of sheet metal receiver guns that, like I said, I've, purchase that I've assembled and yeah um, I mean the the milled stuff I've found for the most part most of the milled things out there you know they're they're pretty good uh the stamp things I guess that's where I'm not I'm not as knowledgeable on AKs as uh lots of people out there um you know including you but I think sometimes you get it you run into problems with the stamp stuff that's what Jim was was telling me when I went out there uh, someone in your yeah. position though could do something about that or do you think even for you, with the machinery and everything you have, it's difficult to do something when it's a stamped gun and it has problems. Oh, like making the heavier stamp receivers or milled milled receivers. Or, or if you just have a stamped gun, just bringing it up to you know, bringing it up to snuff. Because I know there's some of them out there that have had issues because everyone's just been bringing every single thing you can into the country. Yeah, um, there is a lot of junk out there. There was a lot of Romanian guns that were real pieces of crap um, that were all with crooked sights and things mounted funny. And then there's American made guns and we won't use any, anybody's names that. Mm -hmm. I, okay. It looks I, like we're getting Jim calling back. Hey, Jim. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah. Turn that down. We're hearing the feedback. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. If you've got us on, you've got to mute it. Okay, good. So we're we're discussing this um, Vepers being added to the ban list. I'm sorry, man. I'm still getting the ways here. I don't know what's going on with this phone, but uh, I've got you muted on YouTube, and I'm still getting the ways here. I don't know what this is all about. Okay. Um, well, did you, did you want to add, maybe add something to, you know, do you have any opinion of what's going on with that? Oh, we lost him. Okay. He's got some, <laughs> I don't think Jim has uh, done the, a, a live broadcast in a long time. So I know when he first called, we weren't getting an echo. I'm not sure why he's getting an echo now. We have his, we have his speaker muted over here. But he probably doesn't have us muted there. I um, think. Yeah. I know the first first time I did one, uh, it was a little bit of panic on my end too. But I've gotten a little more used to it, believe it or not. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is how it goes when you're trying to do live stuff. It's uh, it's not always an easy thing to do. It's I mean, it's a lot easier now than it used to be, but it's not always the easiest thing to do in the world. It's um, fifty fifty. Yeah. The, you know, the biggest thing that I tell folks is if you get like a good headset that works on USB, you can pretty much plug that into your laptop or your desktop. And then that allows you to just, you know, jump on. And the other things, 
the other things are, are pretty easy as long as your your data stream is relatively good right, um, right. yeah even now I'm not using the hotel data stream I'm using the stream from uh, I have like a, a hotspot an AT&T um, hotspot that I use that gives me a little bit bit better upload upload is the thing that's important that gives you more speed <laughs> All right, so I don't want to turn this into a lesson. I'll so we'll, we'll see if we can get Jim on. If not, I'll try to get him on to come on later, and we'll somehow figure out how to get that done because, you know, he – oh, here we go. Let's call him back. Hold on. Hey, Jim. Hey, man. I think I've got it figured out now. Sweet. Yeah, we don't hear that echo anymore on our side. Yeah, it's all done. Yeah, I, I, I got to – I got to somebody that's smarter than my computer in here to fix it. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So – you know, we'll just do it like this through through um, through my microphone. Do you have um, some comment on what's going on with Vepers being added to the ban list? Well, I kind of came in later, so I don't know what you guys were talking about, but uh, it's obviously it doesn't affect us too much because we don't really depend on them. You know, we kind of learned our lesson after they did the Saiga thing. You know, I uh, uh, I was as shocked as anybody else is. Uh, my you know my concern is that I see a lot of people on the uh, Internet trying to blame Trump for this, and it's like, uh, I don't think like Trump has a whole lot to do with it. I think it's just something that happened because of the sanctions that Obama put into place. And the, from what I understand, the reason it happened was because Kalishnikov Concern is trying to buy Moloch, who's in bankruptcy. And since Kalishnikov Concern is covered by sanctions, that automatically extends to Moloch. So, and this is something that I would think Trump could probably get into and do an executive order to make it go away. But with our kind of political situation, with all the you know, with the with the Democrats fleeing and Russian coal, you know, Russian all this stuff, and the things that are going on over Syria with planes and all this stuff that's going on, I just don't see how he could politically remove that. You know? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's something that was one already in place, and then there's there's a there's a whole system there before it would even get to him that, okay, this thing just went on the list, and then he would have to um, consider us as gun guys trying to deal with that and prices going up and everything. And honestly, I mean, he probably has more crap to deal with. <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, I lost you there for a second. yeah, I said that, you know, honestly, Trump has probably a lot more to deal with than this situation, although it's something for us because uh, there's a lot of gun guys, I think, out there that wanted to get into AKs and get into the high-end stuff. Vepper falls into that category, and they just haven't done anything yet about it, and it's probably too late now. What do you think? Um, well, I'm sure that, you know, whatever's in stock is still going to be available for a little while, but you know, you're going to see price gouging on it. That's, that's, that's a given. You know, it does. People always do. Uh, hopefully, it won't go crazy. But um, it's just like, you know, occasionally you can still find a site that was imported that before you stop it. Fewer and far between, and the price just goes up because of it. You know? uh, I see this as an opportunity for somebody in America to step up myself. If they're going to keep playing this game to knock out any kind of foreign, foreign built guns coming into here, then America needs to step up and do it. I know we've been working on it for a while, and uh, uh, it's time for it to happen. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Because I know that recently you made some uh, partnership agreements. With um, with rifle dynamics, I, I'm uh, you're probably not ready to talk about that, but do you think that you guys will be able to help here with the demand for for the high end stuff? Yeah, I can't say too much about it because it's not my place to say it anymore. I don't I don't own the company, but uh, things are coming. Let's just put it that way. Okay, yeah. So you're definitely you're working on it. I'm sure some other people are. So maybe people will just. Oh yeah, it, it, mm -hmm. it has to happen. You know, what I mean. Honestly, our industry, most of the industry, seems to be going to the lower end of the market. They want to, they want to feed as many people as possible, so they go to the lower end of the market, the five, six hundred dollar AKs. Whereas, you know, people have been counting on Arsenal or, or the Pepper or whatever else they could get to, uh, you know, for a more medium quality upper end AK. And uh, so, American manufacturers are just going to have to start looking at the top end to feed that market because there is, you know, now with the, with the, with the uh, you know, with Arsenal sketchy, say has gone, uh, Pepper's gone, you know. We need to step up. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised no one's done it already with because I've seen the demand of AKs go up and, and along with that there will obviously be a rise in demand for the hot for the higher end things. But it seems like the manufacturers well, focus more on, on AR fifteens. Well, it's, it's a money thing, really Hank. Uh, when you're trying to make AK parts, you know, 
I mean, you hear the horror stories about passing and stuff like that. The only reason they're doing it is because it's inexpensive to do it. It keeps the cost, it keeps the price point down on the gun, but it's not the right way to do it. You know, I mean, David Fillers, when he had the DDI, they, they took the right step in getting, you know, the main parts done in Hammerport, you know, as Hammerport's parts, the bolt, carrier, trunk, and those are the parts that really need to be high quality to give you a better quality AK. And they did it, and PSA, I think, bought it to be able to get those parts. I don't know, I'm not privy to that kind of stuff, but that's the direction the gun needs to go in in this country before it's ever going to be considered, uh, you know, a top quality gun. Okay. And so, does um, ammo come into play here, do you think? Or are we making enough ammo here? Because I know there's been some shortages on that end as well. Well, I heard somebody say, oh, oh God, because there's a whole lot now they're going to stop wool. Well, wool is being bought by Kalishnikov Concern. The only reason wool got caught up in this is because Kalishnikov Concern was looking at buying it. So that just automatically makes them on the sanction list. You know, wool is not on the sanction list. None of their, as far as I know, none of them are owned by any Russian entity, so that, that's the issue that we're dealing with here. It's not owned by a Russian entity. American businesses can't do business with them. It's not a ban. It's just a, you know, you can't do business with them because that's Russian stuff. So as long as, you know, I heard somebody say that, but I don't see how it's going to affect wolf animal or silver bear any of these new animal stuff. You know, it's just, uh, it, it, it's just not, it's not part of the Russian economy. Okay. So for the folks out there who are, you know, who are really wor- like genuinely worried about this because they wanted to buy these things, do you have any advice for them on what to do? Um, you know, if you wanted to get that number, I suggest you buy it as soon as you can. Because I doubt that they're going to be around much longer. You know, I know there's a lot of builders that are depending on those things for base guns. They're probably going to be buying up as many as they can find right now just so they, just so they keep making guns. So not to mention, the, you know, the I'm sure RSR is probably getting a rate down today and they, they're not already on them. You know, RSR, fine group, whoever else is selling them. I'm sure they're all getting heavy calls today allocating, uh, allocating guns wherever they can. So it's just going to be, a, it's going to end up being the seller's market here pretty soon. Um, so I suggest if you want an effort, get it now because it's uh, uh, they're obviously going to be done. Okay, so I got a question from um, from folks listening. They want to know: Are the Vepers worth the money, in your opinion? And uh, if so, what do you think they're really worth? Because obviously, we're going to get price gouging pretty soon. Yeah, we are, and, and really, it's worth what people will pay. I mean, in my opinion, the Vepers are very high quality factory made gun. Uh, they're a little heavier than most guns. Uh, it's a heavier barrel and it has a bigger, bigger receiver, so they have a little more weight on them than most. But as far as a good factory stuff made, they're, they're, they're perfectly good gun. I'm not sure what the retail is on them right now because we don't necessarily deal with them. I think they're somewhere around a thousand bucks, maybe a little less. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them going for twelve, thirteen hundred bucks pretty soon. And then as time goes on, the fewer they are, we're just going to go higher and higher. Okay, and so if if we run into a situation here where you can't get it, what would be a rifle that you would suggest as a replacement for that if folks can't get their hands on that and then they are looking for something? Well, I mean, if you're if you're helping on having a you know having a foreign built rifle from the factory, probably the washer is probably one that you're going to find. Maybe the Edo stuff, and uh, the washer, you know, the quality of those will come up, but it's, you know, it's not it's not near as nice as a gun as a pepper or an arsenal. But it's still it's still a viable gun, and there's still not that much money. Um, you know, you can still get a washer for over seven hundred bucks. So that's not really a bad thing to look at. And most of them are very decent, even a little rough looking, but but they work. You know, and it's a, it's a, it's a spec factory gun. So oh, okay. It's, it's just not a pepper. Right, it's usually is not. Uh, are you saying it's not as good quality? I've noticed the washers are uh, definitely lighter. Okay, cool. All right. So, I mean, you know, I don't want to hold you up on the lines. I know you're busy over there. Um, so we've got to, you know, do you have any kind of time frame? I know the last time I saw you, you said that we'll be able to have access here so far as being able to just walk into local gun stores and picking up a rifle dynamic. Um, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Right 
Well, I mean, that's good news. That's good news because I think, you know, so far it's been, you know, a lot longer than that. I mean, I think folks have been waiting in some cases for like two years, right? Uh, we were up to two years at one time. It's mm-hmm. most of the time it's been around a year later. Okay. We did up to two years at one time. So, you know, the thing is, is, you know, I mean, I know it's sad that we lost the numbers and stuff, but, you know, and there's a lot of people that just don't believe in American AK can be as good. And, and frankly, the, you know, the market has proven that so much. All the new U.S. made AK stuff hasn't really been all that appealing compared to the digital stuff. But I do believe that it's going to be, it's going to step up, and the American companies are going to prove their work. I know we're working on it. I know other people are working on it. And there's a lot of smart people that are really trying to take the right direction in this thing. And, you know, keep it the higher in the market and not necessarily the lower in the market. So, okay. you got to do it. Right. That's good to know. Now, wh- one last thing. I know that I've spoken to some people that were wondering if like now is the time to go out there and get a rifle dynamics because that's kind of got your, you know, got your hands, your touch all over it. Or uh, is it going to be basically this, you know, is it still going to be that same thing when we fully I'm transition? Contracted to be, I'm still contracted to be here for at least the next four years. Uh, really nothing has changed with my involvement here. You know, I'm still part of the quality Okay, cool. So that's good to know. Any Rifle Dynamic fans out there that haven't gotten a Rifle Dynamics rifle yet, you've got the next four years at least to do it before Jim decides to like buy a boat and go sailing in the Caribbean seas or something. Okay. All right. Awesome, Jim. Please, if there's any change of news on this, I'd like you to you know reach out to us so we can bring it to people. All right. Thanks a lot, Jim. I appreciate it. Bye. You're welcome. All right. All right. So there we go. I just wanted to, uh, you know, give Jim a chance there to speak on it. You have any uh, thoughts on that, Walter? No, that's cool. It's, that's that's uh, firsthand with somebody that's involved with it. So um, um, you get to right out of the right from the from the mouth of the of uh, like I said, somebody's involved with the whole process. So yeah, directly. You know, Jim's like he said. I think he said that they're not necessarily buying Vepers right now because they learned their lesson from when everything happened with the Segas. So they've got other things in place for that. Yeah, you, you got you should have a second uh, backup plan. Um, yeah. You know, just in case things happen, especially when you're dealing with political situations and foreign governments. So. Right. And, um, you guys were talking about ammo, or you mentioned ammo. Um, it's kind of hard to pe- compete with the foreign ammo because it's, it's so cheap. Um, and the American companies have never stepped in and really made cheap AK ammo. Um, it's always been higher end stuff. So, yeah. So right now, so the situation that we're in right now, you would say, I mean, really, that's the choice that we have the, the, the foreign market for, uh, for foreign manufacturers for AK type ammo. I know that there's, there is some high end ammo. I don't think I've never really bought any of the high end ammo here. I'm not aware of what those companies would be, but it's it's expensive stuff. You know, you're gonna you don't want to shoot Hornaday hunting ammo when you're doing machine gun blasting. It's not. Just yeah, that's for hunting. <laughs> if if you use your AK for hunting purposes, which some people yeah. do, I, I know used that. To hunt, I used to hunt with a Chinese Type 56. Um, right. Excellent brush gun. You know, when you're stromping through the swamps in Florida. Um, I used to hunt with an SKS and an HK-91, an actual German HK-91. Um, wow. Oh, yeah, that makes some people cringe. But, hey, I dropped it in the water, <laughs> water picked it up, drank the water out of the barrel and shot a hog. So, you know. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. You can't do that with commercial rifles. They won't work after you get them dirty. So um, that's why I like the military guns. Do you think that's because the tolerances are getting – get tighter and maybe or you know what's going on there like why what would be the reason for that AKs and, and HKs and the SKS are designed to work dirty um, and, a, and a, a certain bolt action rifles American one or any bolt action rifle the Mausers will work dirty too um, but um, you know a lot of the semi-automatic American hunting rifles 
if they get a little dirty or dusty, I've seen it where they don't function. So, yeah, I remember I did a I did a mud torture test years ago when I first started doing this YouTube channel. It's pretty embarrassing, but I still left it on. Uh, it's still on the channel for people to look at it. It's also very long. We basically did a AR-15 versus an AK versus a bullpup. So we had, um, I believe it was a Colt LE 6920, and the okay. bullpup was the Tavor when it had just come out. I literally had it for a few days, and I can't remember what AK that we had. I would have to look into that. It's probably on the video for anyone who wants to know or anyone who's watched it. But what we had is like the, the after the first magazine um, through the AK, when we went to, we, we, we got it in mud and stuff like that, and we shot one round through it and it stripped, it stripped off the casing, got stuck inside the barrel, I think. And we didn't have a, the rod, that, this particular one didn't have one of those rods to push it out. Okay. So, yeah. so that's as far as it got. Yeah, I mean, I if I had a choice, you know, and it push come to shove, I would probably grab an AK versus um, the AR-15 just because it can go longer without your proper maintenance. That's just my opinion, though. Okay. I'm sure. I don't want okay. to start the... Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would beg to differ with that, Walter. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, if I had to choose, I would just take an AR. I mean, you could put you could put thousands of rounds through an AR, an AR before you have to clean it. Really? And it's a lot faster and easier to clean it. I mean, it depends on how you're maintaining your AR. It's a lot easier to clean an AR, in my opinion. You know, I'm not saying an AK is real difficult to clean and take down either. It's not. But, you got to stop drinking Branson, uh, that Branson water is doing something to you. Oh, <laughs> okay. See, so we, we can have this. We, You know what? We can have AK versus AR conversation at some other time. I did want to, to bring up this news and, and talk with you. And uh, I'm glad that Jim Fuller came on from Rifle Dynamics and uh, yeah. gave us some opinion on that. And yeah, that was uh, good. yeah. On that. yeah. And, and the, the biggest thing I got out of it, like he said, is like, you know, this is really just something that happened because um, I, what is it? Kalishnikov, he said, was trying to buy it a lot. So because that's Russian owned and this ban is going on, it automatically goes on the list. It's not necessarily, right. I'm sure there's some people out there like, yeah, you know, Trump, do something about this. Well, you know, this has been an ongoing situation for a while. And that's just really how it goes when you're, if you're, if you're in the firearms game and you're collecting guns, you cannot wait until stuff like this happens to buy those guns. I'm always telling people, like I tell Walter, buy terrible guns because that those will go, those will go out real fast. The companies will stop making them and there'll, there'll be few of them. But other news like this, you can't control when it comes along. So if you can afford it, you get into it, right? Yeah, if you're gonna, yeah, when, every time you mix political, uh, you know, foreign governments and, and buying guns, you never know when it's gonna change. You look at look at like uh, South Korea and the M1s, M1 Garands and the M1 carbines that they want to import. There was no reason why they couldn't, but Obama said no. So yeah, that's yeah, gonna ha that's gonna happen now that we have a different administration. So yeah, yeah, get it when you can. When those guns come in, buy yourself one or two, um, and then you know if something happens, then you're like, ah ha, I got one. Yeah, absolutely. And then and then for the time being, as Jim said, there's some American companies that are mo moving on it and manufacturers should move on it. I think too many manufacturers just went into the business of making ARs and thought that, hey, you know, we'll be good to go there. I know there were some people that tried it. Some of those guys don't necessarily have the best reputation out there. It'll be good to see companies that have better reputations getting into the business of making AKs. And, you know, making entry level as well as mid and upper level AKs, since there obviously yeah. is a demand in America for them. Yeah, you have to have all of it. You can't just have high end guns because not everybody needs a high end gun, to be quite honest with you. Um, even though it's high end and it works great. I mean, if you're just going to go out and plink with your boys and, and you only got $400 to spend or three or $500, and it, it'll work. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Not everyone can afford it. I don't. We'll never see the days of seventy-five dollar AKs ever again. <laughs> so, anyone who's done that, I hope you enjoyed it. You took a Kodak moment out of that because we won't see it again. All right, Walter. I know you guys are building stuff out there, so I don't want to keep you on the lines. Um, I invite folks to leave comments and stuff like that. Let us know what you think about this, and if there's any further movement, we'll come. We'll come back to you with it. Lunch wait, is wait, here. Wait. Oh, lunch is there. See, there you go. There you go. So lunch is there. Um, you know, 
Walters from Safety Harbor Firearms, so don't forget to look into that. Uh, Safety Harbor sponsors the Hank Strain situation, as does Rand CLP and Andrews Custom, and of course Big Daddy Guns now that sponsors us doing these live broadcasts that we've been putting on every day. And it's also brought to you, I sound like I'm on PBS right now, but it's brought to you by the folks that um, look out for us on Patreon. So we're Patreon slash Hank Strange, and there's folks out there that are helping us out to keep doing all of this. And we will come back to you tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Peace out. Any last words? Talk Peace. to you later. All right, we're out of here. See ya.